Welcome to Lab 1, titled The Viscosity of Newtonium Fluids. In this lab, we'll learn about fluid viscosity, which is mu, which is um, designated as the internal resistance to fluid flow. Now, there's three different types of viscometers used to measure viscosity, and those three are rotational, falling ball, and tube viscometers. Um, pressure and temperature are the two major impacts on, vis on viscosity. Temperature, however, plays more of a role in viscosity than pressure does. <clears throat> in order to find viscosity, we can take the shear stress and divide it by the shear rate. And then we can find kinematic viscosity by taking the actual viscosity divided by the density. As we see in this plot, which is shear rate versus viscosity, we see there's three different types of lines. We have shear thinning, which as the shear rate increases, your viscosity decreases. We have shear thickening, which as your shear rate increases, your viscosity increases. And we have a Newtonian fluid, which is the most important one. And as you see, um, is viscosity is not affected by shear rate. In this graph, we have shear rate versus shear stress. And as you can see, Newtonian one crosses the y-axis at zero and also has a constant slope. The other um, three different kinds do not either do not have a constant slope or do not cross the y-intercept at y equals zero. So before you can start this experiment, please remember to have your proper um, safety equipment on, your goggles and your gloves. The objective of this experiment will be to determine the absolute and kinematic viscosity of a Newtonian fluid, which is water, at atmospheric pressure as a function of temperature using the falling ball viscometer. Um, the equipment required for this is going to be water, the falling ball viscometer, a circulator, a beaker or flask, the falling balls, a plunger, the caliper, and then gloves like I have on. So this is the falling ball viscometer and it measures the viscosity of transparent, of transparent Newtonian fluids like water. Um, it does so by using the marks A on the top and B on the bottom and measures the distance that the ball falls and the time between those two. Since water has a viscosity of around 1 centipoise, we want to make sure we choose the correct ball to run this experiment with. If you look at the table, you see that the range where 1 centipoise occurs um, correlates with ball 1, which has a diameter of around 15.8 millimeters. We're going to run the experiment with ball number 1. So we need to figure out which one is ball number one, which has the, a diameter of 15.81 millimeters, plus or minus a couple. So we'll use our calipers, choose a ball, and measure from center, from end to end to see what the, the diameter of the ball is. This is going to be our ball. So we unscrew the top lid. Take out the stopper. And fill the tube with water. We want to fill it up pretty high so that we have no gas bubbles when we run our experiment. the ball that we chose into the tube. Then we'll replace the stopper. Be careful, water should come out. and then screw the lid back on. And as we're doing this, you can see that the ball is starting to fall. Before we actually start to record our time, we want to make sure that the ball does a full rotation all the way to the bottom and then back up. Measure the temperature in the room. 
which if you look at this thermometer, it says around 24 degrees Celsius. So since we allowed the ball to run all the way down and all the way back, we can now start our first experiment. So we're going to flip the viscometer. And we're going to watch it to right as it crosses the line. When it, so when it crosses the line, start the stopwatch. You can choose to start the stopwatch when the bottom of the ball crosses the line, when the middle of the ball crosses the line, or when the top of the ball crosses the line. Just be sure you're consistent in when you start and stop the cross. The stopwatch. And remember that the, this falling ball viscometer is only accurate if the falling time is greater than 25 seconds. We're around the halfway point right now. your first fall time. Record that fall time in table 1.1. Now to do the return fall, we're going to flip the falling ball viscometer back over and do the exact same thing. Start the timer when the ball crosses the top one and end it when the ball um, leaves the, the last line. And then we'll stop it when it crosses that line and record that value as your return, as your return fall time. So we just completed this experiment at room temperature and we're going to run the same experiment at two more temperatures at 35 degrees and 45 degrees. In order to heat the water jacket surrounding the tube to 35 degrees we use the circulator. We're going to turn on the circulator, let the water heat up, and then use the thermometer inside this, the jacket to see when the water reaches 35 degrees and 45 degrees Celsius, and then repeat, then repeat the same steps that you saw before.